Hi, I'm Steve Harper. I'm the CEO and founder of Owner Insight, and welcome to the Owner Insight podcast. We have been doing a series called Women in Construction, where we have highlighted several amazing women that are really making a difference in the construction industry. And I am super excited for today's guest. Esther Lambert and I have known each other for a number of years. In fact, she was actually there in the early beginnings of Owner Insight to give us great guidance and feedback. She was working for an owner's rep firm at the time, and she was really instrumental in helping us understand and what owners really need out of a software like ours and really how we can make owners reps a little more effective at the work that they do for the clients they serve. She has just been an amazing spirit to know. She, I, I am lucky to call her a friend and a mentor in this space. She has given me so much great advice and guidance over the years because she is wicked smart. And she now owns her own firm called um, Corporate Project Services Inc. based in South Florida. And I'm so grateful that she agreed to be a part of the Owner Insight podcast because I think she's got so much to offer, so much that our audience can learn from her and her approach to this industry and really to help energize and excite more women to want to look at the construction space as a career opportunity. So let's dive in. Welcome to the Owner Insight Podcast, Esther. I am so grateful that you are taking time. I know you are super busy because you're an in-demand individual. You are um, so amazing to take this time and actually share some of your wit and wisdom with our audience. This Women in Construction series, we've been trying to feature people that have been inspirational and really you know, looking at how they can make their own individual contributions to the construction space. And as I explained in your introduction, um, you are just someone that I've always really, really admired and have, have really appreciated the friendship that we've had over the years. Your feedback and guidance as we were developing our platform was so instrumental. And so I am beyond thrilled that you agreed to be a part of this series. So welcome to the Owner Inside Podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me, Steve. And uh, it's been so, it's, a, it's a pleasure knowing you. And it's, it's been such a wonderful experience. Um, you know, our collaborative efforts and, and just the journey that we've been on, you know, in this construction space. So, you know, thank you so much for your support, for your encouragement, your friendship, of course. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, we we really have struck up a great friendship. I think that what's great about us is, and, you know, you've gone, you know, through uh, different twists and turns within your career. And now you have your own, you know, firm and you're doing great things relative to what you do day to day for the clients you serve. But I want to give our audience just a little bit of background about your experience and sort of where you are today and, and, and why you're so passionate about the work that you do. So um, can I, can I just um, backtrack a bit to sure. yes. in my journey? It's funny because but first of all, um, I just let me just acknowledge our veterans today and yes. and say thank you for your service. I mean, we can never take take your service for granted. Absolutely. So, you know, we really appreciate you. So let let's let's that's saying let's go back to my journey and how I accidentally got into the space. <laughs> And, and it's funny that your adulthood is um, influenced or instructed by your childhood without you even realizing it. Yep. So um, my 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 first introduction to construction was my parents um, building their home. I'm from Jamaica, and uh, back then nobody knew anything about mortgages. So it was, and I still I think some countries still do it and people in Jamaica probably still do it, where they they construct a few rooms that they can afford it and mm -hmm. live in it while the, while, the, while the construction is taking place. So we had this builder. He was not trained nor anything, but I tell you, he could outbuild anybody today. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, we were all, all the kids, and it, it basically it was a community effort because um everybody in the community is, are we okay steve yep you're good yep i was yep. just putting you on screen because you're the star so <laughs> <laughs> okay. so thank you 
everybody everybody in the community um collaborated so whatever materials were delivered we were there you know um taking it from from because we um jamaica is very hilly so our house was on a hill so all the kids the neighbors we would we would after getting home from school we would participate in taking the the the, the, the materials from from the our gate up to the house and um the, my my oldest brother would would cook and we would work and we would tell stories and in the day we would just hang around um the builder his name we called him brother d and just watch him build and i i was so fascinated by what he was doing but i never thought that i it's something that i could get involved in i ended up um becoming a teacher then got into banking for a few years came to the u.s and somehow I, I i met this woman who was in construction and she basically introduced me to to this phenomenal industry that i'm in and i'm really excited about it i i fell in love with it and i never stopped enjoying what i'm doing oh i love that so let me ask you i mean um could you could you talk about that um that woman that sort of encouraged you and guided you as you um, looked at this as a possible career opportunity and sort of, you know, what were, what were some of the things that you learned from her that really helped inspire you to want to take this journey? Okay. So um, it was, it was a very interesting um, situation where I was, she needed somebody to, um, she had a contract and she needed someone to, um to basically provide the service i got into it not really knowing what anything about it one of the things i remember her saying to me um because during the in when we when we met the first thing she spoke to me about was my handshake she said esther this is a man's <laughs> industry so you are going to have to have a much stronger handshake and um so she 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 taught me that was the first thing she taught me um she basically i i was thrown i i i don't want to say to the wolves but, <laughs> <laughs> but i was thrown in this situation um because she um she she was she she was not on the on the construction site so I was I I went to work with engineers and I was fortunate enough to have someone who was the construction manager at the time, an engineer who is a Jamaican, and um, he he was he basically was quite instrumental in helping me with the with with the learning curve, as well as one of my clients. I'll never forget him. The late big tash he really he was an engineer he graduated from the university of montana i think in 1952 wow. and he worked on apollo 11. oh traveled around the world and you know he was just a really great guy and when he saw me struggling he said come over to my office i'm going to teach you what you need to know so while I was hired by a, a woman, I have to say that men supported me. Um, there was another, there was another guy, um, another client for that matter, um, Curtis Priest. Um, he called the, the 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 he called up the the, the the executive vice president of the client that uh, that was providing the construction engineering services and he, he said you have got to come out here and meet esther lambert she's a wonderful <laughs> woman I, <laughs> I was shocked when his name um the vice president's name is pat davis i was kind of shocked when he told me um but he came out and we also struck up a friendship and he's been very supportive to me um so that's there weren't a lot of um, women in the in, in 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 the business when I started. So I was really supported by quite a few men. I still have some support, but then I, women started getting into the business, and uh, we have supported each other. 
and and um, I met Anne McNeil, who started the National Association of Black Women in Construction a few years ago, and she has been very supportive, um, not just to myself but other women in construction, and she has guided us in so many different areas that we did not know. So, you know, the support is there and I in turn support other women. I've hired other women um, in my business for, on construction. I have supervised women on, 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 on construction projects. That picture in the background is one of the projects that I worked on. I think oh, it's nice. the largest project that I worked on. It was the high level disinfection upgrade for Miami-Dade Water and Sewer Department. That was the original budget for that um, contract for, was um, $750 million. Um, fortunately for the client, unfortunately for the com community, well, in a way it's fortunate also, that was in the middle of the um, recession. And um, so the the price, the, the cost went down because of course a lot of construction companies were desperate for work. So yeah. they were they they um, came in a lot less than was the original um, intended cost. And um, so it saved the county a lot of money. So um you know that's these are some of the, the, the things that really inspire me. And, and that the women I've worked with, uh, you know, they inspired me to continue. They, 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 they support me as much as I support them. And people like you, of course, Steve, like I mentioned before, if it, if it weren't for men who was so, because uh, it, this industry was owned by men. So, you know, men had to open the doors for women. So. You know, I, I I have to, you know, give kudos and credit where credit is due. Yeah, well, it's it's easy to support good people like yourself because you're so um, you're just you're so innovative in your approach. What I what I remember back to one of our first conversations was how uh, how collaborative you were in in ultimately sort of taking the time to understand what we were trying to do as a company, really the impact we wanted to make, and. You said, "Hey, let me take you aside and show you what you what you really need to do." And these are the things that owners need. These are the things that I need in order to support the owners I serve. And you were so gracious in your feedback and your collaboration. And you were um, you didn't actually look at the, at the time we were very much in startup mode, but you never um, made us feel like that. You always gave great input and guidance along the way. And you know, much of that feedback that we received in those early years you can see in our, our platform and how we've developed along the way. So I can't thank you enough for that. I I've, I've got to say, you know, the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm continue to be impressed by is just how gracious you are in terms of where you are with your career and what you have accomplished and how you do acknowledge and recognize the people that have played a role in that. Let me ask you for you and in, in where you are today, just to give our audience a little bit of perspective, tell them about your firm and sort of the approach that you take now and and, and maybe how some of those other prior roles that you had in, in different positions sort of inform how you do it differently for your clients today. Uh, that's a great question, Steve. Um, so um, I have a company called um, corporate project services, and we provide um, support services um, for construction projects, especially capital construction projects. Um, one of the things that we don't think about when we see, you know, construction um, construction work taking place, whether on the streets, uh, um, roads and highways, bridge building, or water wastewater treatment plants, or whatever, um, government contracts are out there. We don't think about the soft skills that are required um, yeah. to, 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 to support the project. Um, you know, there, I have so much respect for engineers and con contractors. I don't think that the world would be what it is now without engineers. However, um, I think our, our 
careers or our professions are informed by our character traits. And I don't think that um, engineers have the soft skills that are necessary. Yeah. So to, 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 tie, to tie some areas of the projects together. So I, the, I decided from my experience that, you know, these are areas um, in, in project management that need to be addressed. And so I, I li literally fell in love with, with it. And uh, just, to, just to explain, I actually worked on a project for the bank that I worked um, for in Jamaica fell in love with it, but I did not even know what discipline it was until yeah. I got into construction management. And so, because I so fell in love with it, I wanted to know more about it. I So I decided that I was going to do a deep dive into what project management is all about. So I ended up doing a PhD in organization and management, specializing in project management. And um, you mentioned that um, I'm very, collaborative and my um, dissertation had a lot to do with collaboration in 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 construction capital construction management so i where wherever i i with whichever client i serve i don't just serve them based on the scope of work that that i get on paper i look to see whatever what needs there are and support those needs as best as I can. I love that. You know, the the thing that I think is so necessary, and, and you you and I are on the same page, you know, when, when you look at it, you can have the greatest teams in the world. You can have the greatest technology for communicating and documenting and tracking. But if you don't have a team that actually knows how to communicate and engage and actually get along, and, you know, there are going to be, you know, ebbs and flows of every project, right? You know, and, and you're going to have some highs and you're going to have a lot of lows and how the team comes together and how they treat one another and the respect that needs to be built across the various roles that are, are there is so critical. And, and owners, I think, uh, don't often understand that, right? At the end of the day, you're trying to create this brand new sandbox, you know, Absolutely. which is going to be your building and you're, you're bringing these kids together, so to speak, you know, using that, uh, as, as kind of the example, but you're, if they don't have the understanding or the appreciation of the rules of engagement and how we are to perform what we need to perform and what we need to do to show respect and, and, and professionalism in every aspect, uh, oftentimes uh, you see projects that get off, off track, right? You've, you've probably seen some of those situations. And so the, the role that you play is so critical in, in making sure that, you know, there, everybody has, has the opportunity to be seen and heard in a project and that there is uh, the rules of engagement are understood. So maybe talk a little bit about that, maybe a, you know, example or two that you've seen that haven't gone so well and, and then how different it's been for, you know, an environment that, you know, does proactively think about these things and actually, um, you know, wants to create a more collaborative environment. Um, thanks for that question, Steve. I have been fortunate to have had um, most of my clients who are open to, um, to learning and to being collaborative. Um, let, me, let me talk about the po positive, go to the negative and then come back to <laughs> Perfect, the yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> so when I just started out, I, I mentioned that I was fortunate enough to start working with a Jamaican, his name is Glenn Cunningham, I have to acknowledge him. And one of the things he taught me, um, or he emphasized me because I I was fortunate enough to, to have been raised in a community where everybody's respected. But, um, you know, Glenn said, Esther, everybody who comes through this door is important to the, to the project. So it didn't matter if you are the person who cleaned the cleaned the construction um, office, whether it was a trailer or or an office. If you are if you are the cleaner, you are respected. If you, and if you are the the client's um, executive, you are respected. And so, and it was genuine. It, it wasn't. It was not. You know, like 
trying to ingratiate yourself with mm -hmm. everybody. And we saw each other as having um, an important role to play because each of a construction project has multiple stakeholders. And if we don't, if we do not um, give each stakeholder their respect or, or listen to them, then we are heading for a failed project. I've never, I don't know that I've ever worked on a failed project or a failed program with multiple projects, but I have worked on a, a program. And it, I think that was, a, I mentioned that, that um, the Miami Dade Water and Sewer Department was the largest program that I worked on, but it wasn't. I worked for another client that had a billion dollar program. That, and that's where I, we met Steve. And I yeah. actually left because it was such a difficult, disrespectful environment, not mm. from my employers, but from members of the client team. And because of that, the it, it affected um, the morale of the people who were working on the project as well as the progress of the project. And I felt like if I cannot, um, if I cannot provide the effective um, service that I'm there to, pro to provide, it didn't make any sense for me to stay. So that yeah. was a difficult situation. Um, I'm sure that they got their act together because the project eventually was completed. But in, in my mind, and as from other um, experts in project management, especially, in, <clears throat> excuse me, in the construction space, if you um, have a collaborative, respectful, um, coordinated environment, then it's going to make your project more successful than you, than, 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 than that of a failure. And it's also a part, it should be a part of your risk management planning and processes, because the biggest risk to a project, I believe, is having um, human relations failure. Yes. So this project, like I said, I have um, worked on mostly successful projects and I'm still working on projects that I consider to be very successful because we have very good engineers, very good contractors, but we also, but they are also very, um, very collaborative. The clients as well, they are very cl uh, collaborative. They are engaged with each other. They respect each other's opinions. Um, I can go in and if I see something, for example, I started a, pro a contract recently for a project. And um, when I went in, it was not as organized as it should be. So I guess that's why I was brought in. Yeah. And, um, I was able to, to, to have conversations with the various stakeholders who were open to listening and giving their feedback, listening to my feedback. And as a result, the, the project is basically, you know, doing much better than it was before I stepped in. And there are still areas of improvement. I have learned from them. They are learning from me. And that is what's important. We have to be open to learning from each other. Oh, I love that. That's an excellent, excellent point. Let me, let me ask you, as it relates to women in the construction space, that can be a very challenging thing to, you know, to, to find, right? So what, what advice do you give women to make sure that they are coming to the table so that they can, you know, establish this is, this is my expertise. This is my role within the project. And like you said, I mean, you, you've given a lot of credit to, to men that have helped and saw the potential in you throughout your career. And, and that's phenomenal. What do you say to women that maybe haven't had that, but really need to step into that power to make sure that they are respected and that they are in a position to really uh, feel confident in expressing their their confidence in what they do and how they do it and why they're there and, and uh, you know, making sure that they, they, they don't get overlooked or don't become a footnote of the project. So um, one of the fortunate things now, Steve, is that there are quite a few women in the, in, in, in this industry right now. 
absolutely there is need for more women. Um, but I remember when when I just started, there was I think one woman in in that space that I was in at that time, and what I learned from her is that she was not afraid to, and she was experienced. So I, I guess it was easy for her. She was not afraid to make her opinions known. She was very soft spoken, but she knew her stuff and she made, she, she made, she made it known that, listen, I have an engineering degree. I have experience on so many projects and she did not have to say it. She just, she just put in the work because of her other women started coming in and she mentored them. And I think one of the areas that still needs to be improved on is mentorship for women. So it's one thing for a brand new person to come in and um, show that they know their stuff, but it is, to me, even more important that the women who are already in the in 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 the construction environment um, offer mentorship to these younger women, and I'm seeing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I have seen one of one of the clients that I have. They now have quite a few female um, vice presidents and senior um, senior associates in 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 the. In, in, in their firm. And that was not the case when I when I started. There was really this one woman who was not, she was not, she was an associate, but she was not even a senior associate at the time. And basically she stretched, she reached back, she stretched out her hands and reached out to other women and put them in the space. So um, it's about, you know, showing that not being afraid to do the work, um, not being afraid to put on your hard hat and your boots and go out there and get into the trenches with the men because that's what the work calls for. Yeah. So it's 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 really about proving yourself, um, stepping up to whatever the need of the project is. That 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 picture behind me, the project manager was actually a woman. It was oh, a nice. large pro program with multiple projects, and that project was hers. So That's great. Um, it's about just do, putting, you have to put in the work. There's no getting around that. And once I believe when people see that you're willing to put in the work, then of course they will ele elevate you to more responsibilities and more rewards in the industry. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I heard a phrase many years ago that um, actually came out of NASA that said, you don't have to tell people that you're valuable or that you're the expert. You just are too busy showing. And, you know, you show up and like you said, do the work, be committed to it. And, um, you know, it's 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 so valuable. And I think um, your, your suggestion of mentorship, finding a mentor or being a mentor, you know, that experience that you have a lot of times, um, you know, I, I think there's this unusual dynamic in, in the workplace that people fear asking someone for guidance and direction because they don't know how to start that conversation. They don't know how to ask for a membership and sometimes or a mentorship. And sometimes people, um, you know, they, they don't understand the value of having that. Right. And and at the end of the day, I think, you know, being willing to come to the table and say, you know, you have something I could learn from you. You have something that I uh, either your approach to how you communicate with people, how you engage the project team, the ease of which you handle some of the stresses that get thrown on, on us at a uh, on a daily basis. I respect and admire these things. And I would like to learn how to adapt that into my own style, my own approach. And I think having that confidence to do that and, and being willing to be open to say, you've got something to teach. If you'd be willing, I'm willing to learn. Uh, that's the greatest way to get a mentor relationship off the ground for sure. And I, I like how you use the the analogy of, of that um, one individual that sort of reached back and said, okay, who can I bring along with me? You know, how can I, how can I take my experience and my uh, you know, my expertise to help, you know, path, you know, pave the way for um, someone else to carve their own path. So I, I love that. Oh, absolutely. And another thing too, it, don't be afraid to say I made a mistake because we are all, <laughs> we're all humans and we do make mistakes. 
Sure. And if someone makes a mistake, don't beat them over their head. I mistakes are how people learn. Yes. If you make a mistake, you never forget that lesson. Absolutely. So don't be afraid to make a mistake and don't knock people too hard when they make mistakes. I think that's great feedback. Let me let me ask you, are there any organizations or associations that you might like to share with anybody who watches this or, or hears this on the podcast platforms, specifically women that are, are already in the construction industry or are thinking about it as an opportunity? What what type of resources do you suggest that they seek out and, and become a part of? Um, sure. There is the organization that I'm a member of, which is the National Association of Black Women in Construction. It's a young um, organization, but it is growing. There is also the National Association of Women in Construction. And um, there is also the water. There is a, a there is I can't remember exactly the name of the organization, but it's it's an it's a water based um, organization and it has both men and women. And don't be afraid to join organizations with men. Um, there's this world has both men and women. So it's, it's, it's important that yeah. we, we integrate and um, they, they, and they learn from us and we learn, uh, we learn from, from, from you guys. So, um, you know, just step out there with, um, You'd be surprised to see how much help that people are willing to give to people who are willing to just step out of their comfort zone and and learn. Yes, that's uh, that's beautiful advice. Let me ask you one last question. Um, this has just been I, I I could speak to you for hours. I mean, this the podcast could go for a long time, and we'll definitely have to do a follow up because that you're just you're just so great. Um, your your points and your approach, I think, is just it's very inspiring. If there is a woman out there that might see this uh, or hear this podcast uh, that is thinking about the construction industry as a career path and, you know, keeping in mind that, yes, there are schools that are geared towards this, but there's, you know, and I think you might agree, they're not doing a good enough job about showing this as an avenue of an opportunity. And the construction industry creates such a great, great place for people to really explore a variety of career paths within the construction industry. But if you had an opportunity and you were addressing, um, a, a, you know, an individual or a group of women that are thinking about construction as a career path, what would be your pitch to them and, and why should they consider it? Oh my goodness. First of all, it's, it's, it's a lifetime career. If, if you get into this space, um, you're going to stay there. So, um, then there's also the 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 camaraderie. There is when you get into the construction space, you 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 develop um, friends for life, you develop um, clients for life because it's really a small. It's not as big an industry as we think it is, but the opportunities are there. And then there is also the the pay. If you if you, it's one of the highest paying. Um, industries i believe in, in in this country and maybe maybe the world and for especially for women especially single women with uh single mothers if you want your independence that's the space to be in whether or not you're a mother this career can take you to places that are you know Un unbelievable. I ha I have female friends who are engineers, who are contractors, who um, are techni technical people who um, and they, they they all have an excellent um, living standard because the 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 the, the space scale in, in this industry is much better than most other places. If you, you want to compare um, the educational um, level of someone who is in this. Let's compare someone who is in the retail space with someone at the same educational level in, in, in construction. And I can tell you that that person in construction may, may make three times as much as a person in retail. So wow. my, 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 my advice is seek out 
seek out an opportunity there. And you don't necessarily have to get a four, four year college degree. You can go to a technical training school for a much shorter time and end up in a, in a job that pays you extremely well. So that's great. Well, let me ask you um, this last final question. If people want to learn about your company and what you bring to the table and there, or you have someone out there that might want to maybe uh, get some additional guidance and advice about this as a career path, how would you like people to get in contact with you? I have a um, website, corporoserve.com. My phone number is, I, I'm on LinkedIn. I my i have um you can contact me at elambert at corporalserve.com my phone number is listed 954-701-2454 and i'm, I'm available I, I i'm here to serve not just to clients but to people who want to learn about the industry and you know various aspects of life that people you might not necessarily know about um, some people have been mentored by women all my life. And so I'm available to mentor other women. I love that. I am so grateful to know you. I'm so grateful for our friendship. And I've got to say, I am so darn proud of you because, you know, just the, the opportunity to see where you've gone and what you're doing with your own venture and being the entrepreneur that I knew you were always going to be. I just had this get, this gut feeling, but you you bring a spark to project teams that is really needed and necessary out there. And so uh, I am so grateful for um, us to have stayed in touch all these years and uh, for your just, you know, your generosity and your your kindness, which is is so lacking sometimes in this world. And so it's it is a it is so amazing. So I encourage anybody that sees this to definitely look Esther up. We're going to include uh, links to her company and her LinkedIn, but I, I would highly recommend if you get the opportunity, have a conversation with her, you'll probably end up making a friend for life because uh, I have, and I'm, I'm better for it. So Esther, thank you so much for being a part of this podcast and thanks for, you know, your time and your wisdom and most importantly for just you. I mean, you're just a gift. Thank you, Steve. And likewise, thank you so much for your friendship. I had no idea that when we met, we'd, <laughs> we'd be on this journey together. And I look forward to continuing the journey with you. Thank, thank you for you. your kindness as well. Well, I sure appreciate it. You are amazing. Well, we'll be back again with another episode of the Owner Insight Podcast. For, but for now, thank you so much. And Esther, have a phenomenal rest of your day. Thank you, Steve. You too. Thank All you, right. everyone. Thank you.